want you to keep your Bibles open this evening, and I'm going to give you something from the Scripture, a great study in the Word of God. Let's get into it. Uh, Psalm 8 tonight, and uh, look at Psalm 8, and begin with verse number 1. Psalm 8 and verse 1. Do hold your Bibles with you tonight. We'll be turning to a couple more Scriptures. O Lord, our, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth who hath set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Stop right there. Look back in verse 3. He said, when I consider the heavens, it said the work of thy fingers. He's talking to God there. Tonight, I'm going to preach on the fingers of God. Keep your Bible open there tonight, and we're going to turn to a few, maybe another scripture too, maybe not. I'll try not to ask you to turn to many, uh, so I won't break it up so much tonight, but I'm going to give you what the Bible teaches about God's fingers. Did you know the Bible says, says that God has fingers? You know, a lot of people think God is like a big ghost sitting on a throne and you can sort of see like he's a mist or cloud or something. No. According to the Bible, God has fingers. And if a person has fingers, they can write. And God does write. He can write. And tonight, we're going to look at man's response to what God wrote. You can learn more from the Bible than you can anywhere or from anything else. As I'm going to show you tonight, we're going to see tonight man's response to what God has wrote. Man's had certain responses to what God wrote all the way down through history, and we'll look at that through the Scripture. So stay with me for a few minutes tonight, and uh, we'll look at it. Whatever God writes is creative, as you'll see. Whatever God writes is life-giving. But if it's rejected, it will destroy you. The big debate among human beings tonight is whether or not we actually have something that God wrote. That's the big debate. What they're debating about in college campuses on the news, and they tried to dismiss it long ago, is that there's no such thing on this earth as a book that God wrote. If there's a book on this earth God wrote, that means every other religion in the world and contradictory to it would be wrong. And there's two types of people, them that believe it and them that don't. So tonight, we'll look first of all at Psalm 8 and verse 3 that I gave you there a minute ago and say the first thing about God's fingers is that God's fingers made the stars. He created some, made others. He flung them out into space with his fingers. That's what the book said. God took his fingers and slung stars out into space and said, you stop there, you stop there, you stop there, and you stop there. And he made every single one of them. They said Sir Isaac Newton many, many years ago had a replica of the solar system on his desk. And he had, uh, he had the sun, the moon, and, and the, the planets, all the night, uh, Saturn, and uh, Neptune, Pluto, uh, Venus, Mars, all of them on a perfect uh, uh, replica of the, of, the, uh, of the universe. And he had it there on his desk, and a scientist came in and saw it, and he looked there and he said, My goodness, what a beautiful uh, replica of the universe. Who made that? And Sir Isaac Newton said, Nobody. And he said, Come on, man, who made that? He said, Nobody. It just evolved. He said, That's ridiculous. Somebody made you that. He said, You believe the real one got here? You believe the real one got here? Uh, uh, you believe the real one got here by itself? How come you believe that fake one got here by itself? Amen? You believe the real one got here with no help? How can you believe? Uh, I can believe that little one got here by itself before I can believe the real thing got here by itself. And so we see that God's fingers made them. Let me, let me illustrate this just a little bit. Uh, let's, let's do this. I've showed you this experiment before. Take one page of your Bible, like this right here. Take one page of your Bible and put your fingers on it like that. I can feel my finger and my thumb through the page of the Bible, right? You got it? Everybody got one page in your hand? Now, uh, put, your, put your fingers on it like this right here, and this, this is, would be, let's say, the difference between your two fingers there, the thickness of that one 
piece of paper there between your fingers would be the distance between earth and the sun. Okay? That's the difference between earth and the sun. What's between your two fingers there? 93 million miles. There's 93 million miles between your two fingers on that scale, like a scale. All right? Now, according to that, if that represented 93 million miles, the nearest star, the nearest star between your fingers would be 71 feet thick of paper. From this wall right here all the way to the back wall, back there, hush deacons. And, uh, and uh, the, this, the wall, there'd be 71 feet, each one of them. Now imagine, how many pieces of paper would just be from here to here? 93 million miles each. That's just to the nearest star. There's a lot of room out there, brother, that God made. And they said to the diameter of the galaxy would be 310 miles thick of paper. From here on the other side of Atlanta, thick of paper, 93 million miles each one. That's pretty big, isn't it? I mean, that's just a galaxy. And they said to the end of the universe would be 31 million miles thick of paper to the end of this universe. 31 million miles thick of paper and each paper represents 93 million miles. As they say out in the country, that is a fur peace. And buddy, I'm telling you tonight, brother, that's a long way. I'm telling you. That's a long way. But God made that with his fingers. That's the God that man you come to worship every Sunday. And we ain't crazy coming to here every Sunday, brother. I mean, God made those stars. Now, I'll give you a little thought here. Personally, I, I don't, I'm not sure if as many stars as they claim they are. I don't think God have a problem making them, but I think sometimes what they're seeing in them telescopes is reflecting I really do. You know, there's a sea of glass out there that God made, and if you ever went in a, in a, in a place like Ripley's, believe it or not, or even some restaurant stuff where they got mirrors around and there's lights, and you can see it looks like a miles down through there where the lights reflect and the lights reflect, where there's two mirrors, they may be seeing a bunch of reflections. I'm not sure about that. Uh, but I know one thing. God made a bunch of them. There is a bunch of them tonight, and God's fingers made the stars. The sun itself will hold one million of this earth. And this earth ain't little, brother. And the sun will hold one million. There are some stars tonight that will hold 500 million of our sun. That's a big ball of fire. I'm telling you what, brother. All right, listen, that's a, God used his fingers to make the planet. Now you say, well, what's the big deal over that, preacher? Because the same instrument that God used to make those planets, he used to write your Bible. The Bible that you've got in your lap tonight is written by the fingers that God made the universe with. And he made the, his, he made the stars. Number two, in Exodus chapter chapter 8 and verse 19. You don't have to turn to it. The Bible said he made lice. He made the lice and from the dust of the earth. And he made these lice from the dust of the earth. It was the fifth miracle that we're going to deal with tonight. When Moses come into Pharaoh. And when Moses come into Pharaoh, he said, let my people go. Well, you know the story. Pharaoh said, I don't know God and I ain't let them go. Get out of here. I have you killed. And Moses said, all right, we're going to have some plagues. And when we have some plagues, by the time God gets through with you, you're going to let the children of Israel go. You all know that story, the first several chapters of the book of Exodus. And so Moses said the, the, they begin to have the plagues. And the first plague there, uh, of course, was when his rod turned into a serpent. And their rods turned into a serpent. And his rod swallowed up their rod. The second was when he turned the river to blood. The third one was when he made the frogs. The fourth one when he got rid of the frogs. The fifth one was when he made lice on man and beast. But you'll notice something. Every one of these miracles, the Egyptians were able to duplicate. When he made the frogs, the Egyptians come out and said, let there be frogs. I don't know why they'd want more frogs. They just wanted to show that they had as much power as Moses did. When Moses threw his rod down and it turned into a snake, they threw their rods down and theirs turned into a snake. They could duplicate every one of those miracles. Somebody said, can the devil work miracles? Absolutely. Does the devil have power? Second to God. You say, well, the devil can't create life. He's going to in the book of Revelation. He's going to give an image of the beast 
life. It's already there, and the devil's going to give it life. And so the devil creates the frogs. The devil makes the rod turn into a snake. But the Bible said, when Moses turned up the dust in the lice, he said he smote the dust, and the dust became lice. And everybody got lice. Every, all the kids had lice. Every one of them. I think he must have worked that miracle on our bus kids about a year ago. But anyway, I mean, they all the dust turned into lice. And they all got lice. And everybody started getting it. It was all over Egypt. Pharaoh, he's bald-headed in the movie, but he might have had hair. And brother, if he did, he had lice. And his kids had lice. His wife had lice. And everybody had lice. And you know what the Egyptian soldiers did? Or the Egyptian magicians said? The Bible said they went down and they tried to do it and they couldn't do it. And they tried to do it and they couldn't do it. They tried to do it and they couldn't do it. They, do it they, do it. they could make the rod turn into a snake. They could make the frogs, but they could not make the dust turn into lies. Why? Because that would be replicating the original creation, creation something out of dust, and they can't do it. And you know what the, uh, the magician said? The Egyptian magician said, we can't do this. This is the finger of God. That was God's finger back there, ladies and gentlemen, that made the lies turn up from the dust. And so have you ever thought of what might happen if the devil, devil could counterfeit the original creation? He couldn't do it. Think about what he would make. And you give him a little while. He, uh, the, that's why the devil can't give a life-given Bible. The devil can't make a Bible that'll give life. The devil can't make life out of the dust of the earth. He can take something we've already got and give it life, but the devil can't copycat the original creation, which is God with his fingers touching dust and making life out of it. Number three, we see in the Bible tonight that the fingers of God gave the Ten Commandments. In Deuteronomy chapter 9 and verse 10, it said God wrote them with his finger. Now old Moses went up there and stayed 40 days and 40 nights. And buddy, he got up there and he prayed and he fasted 30, 38, 39, 40. And the Bible said God gave them to him. And, and you know in the movie, in the movie, he had something that looked like this. I don't know if I can get this off here or not. I guess I can. But it looked like this, see. And old Moses come carrying them down. You remember the movie? He come carrying them down like this. And, uh, and he had it like this. And he said, God took his finger. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Hunt. Thou shalt remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. The Bible said God wrote that with his finger. With his finger. With his finger. And so he wrote, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not uh, uh, covet thy neighbor's house or land, anything that is thy neighbor. All ten of them. Moses had them in stone. And boy, he come down there, and the Bible said that old Moses come down there, he heard a bunch of music playing. I mean, he heard boom, 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 boom. He heard that bass. And he said, oh, Lord, what's going on down there? And he looked. They had, they had cameras set up. And they had uh, they was, they was having tailgate parties and drinking beer. And, and they had that bass playing. Boy, they had some old rapper up there hollering out. And the people was dancing and about all naked. And the Bible said, he's the only man in the Bible who broke, broke all Ten Commandments at one time. He, he took them like this. And he threw that thing down and busted it. And he got mad. God called him back up on the mountain. He got another set. But I want you to notice tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible said God wrote them with his fingers of God. Of God. Amen. That's how he got the Ten Commandments. And, but I, you say, well, can God write? Absolutely. Over in Jeremiah 36 and verse 23, there's a man named Jehudi. And the king had the, had the Jeremiah and them had the scripture and they had that roll and he brought that thing out before the king and the king said, I want to see what's in there. I, I've heard about that God wrote that. And so he does it like this, you know, and he rolls it out and he starts reading and he says, I don't like this. And the Bible said, God wrote them words. And then it said that that man got mad and Jehudi took a pen knife and he cut it up. You listen? 
That's a picture of a Bible translator. That's a picture of the new modern version. They cut out this part. They cut out this part. That's in Jeremiah 23, people. Read it when you get home. And he cut that thing up and threw it in the fireplace. Listen to me carefully. And he threw that thing in the fireplace and Jeremiah went to the Lord and said, Lord, they burned your Bible. And God said, sit down, Jeremiah. And listen to me. The Bible said God spoke another set of words and gave it to Jeremiah and he wrote every one of them words down and added a bunch of more words to it and it was inspired. You know, there's a lot of people going around saying only the originals inspired. Only the originals inspired. Only the original Greek and Hebrews inspired. All you got is an English Bible. That's not inspired. Oh, no. Oh, no. You can't say that. If only the originals inspired, that second set he got wasn't inspired. And the Bible said God even added things to it that wasn't in the first one, and it was all inspired. Amen. I'm trying to tell you tonight God can write, and God does write, and God gives his writing to men. And he got, God gave those commandments to Moses. Number four, we're moving right along here. In Daniel chapter 5, when King Belshazzar was having his party, God wrote on the wall. Daniel chapter number 5. You know the story. You know this, that story there? Old Belshazzar, he was wicked. And he was having a big party one night. He had them all the time. And he had them parties, and God let him go. God let him go. God let him go, and God let him go, and God let him go. And boy, he had one one night. He said, everybody, hear ye, hear ye. We're going to have one Friday night. And he put signs up. He put it on TV. Don't miss it. Happy hour is going to be at 9 o'clock. Ladies, get in free. Bring, here come one, come all. I mean, uh, oh, Mick Jagger's going to be there. And all these old hippies from way back a long time ago. And we're going to have Cher, you know, and, and Janet Jackson and Michael Jackson. And, and we're going to have special appearance uh, by this and, and then we're going to have some old modern day perverts Eddie Murphy and people like him you know we're going to have this this one and that one and, and we're going to have food catered in here they're going to have shrimp that big and lobster and, and, and everything else everybody's coming to the party and brother they all showed up to that party I mean they come in there I mean on the red carpet was laid out they was out there with their cameras here comes so and so here comes Cameron Diaz um, here comes uh, here comes uh, uh, what's his name uh, uh Oh, Pit, Brad Pitface. Uh, the guy's got the pits on his face. Oh, Brad Pitface, here he comes. And here comes Fat Lip Jolie, the, the, the blood sucker. And here she comes, the brother kissing blood sucker. And here she comes. And, and, and here comes Brittany. And there comes Paris and Lindsay Lowdown. And all of them here, they all come. Everybody's going to be at this party. Everybody's going to be there. Come on, come on. Man, Hollywood's going to be here. And that night, they got a little drunk. Everybody got about three seats in the wind and a demon told Belshazzar said why don't you do something a little special tonight and the devil got in Belshazzar and he said we're going to do something particularly blasphemous tonight you know God will let people go a lot of times when they just sin just normal sin but when they cross a line and start bringing his holy thing and in blasphemy like that old wicked Kathy Griffin you ever heard of, y'all heard about her on the news goes out of her way to blaspheme Christianity she's crossing a line that you'd better not cross now, going out in regular sin is bad enough. But you know what Belshazzar said? He said, go get the vessels of the house of God that we stole out of Jerusalem and bring them to me. And they had run down. These are the holy vessels. <laughs> Don't look like a holy vessel, but it is. These are the holy vessels. That looks like an unholy vessel. <laughs> and that's what Jed Clampett and them had. <laughs> Woo! And... Uh, they got these vessels out of the house of the Lord. You heard now, Jed Clampett really didn't get his money from discovering oil. You know that, don't you? He switched to Geico. That's how. That's why they got all that money. And that's how uh, Fred Flintstone's wife had all that nice jewelry. That's what they say. I heard that on TV. Uh, but anyway, that, uh, Belshazzar said, Go get them holy vessels. They said, What do you want them for? Them come out of the house of God. He said, Go, yeah. And here come, here come a man. He brought these holy vessels. He said, is this what you want, king? He said, that's what I want. And he said, pour that thing full of wine. And God don't like wine poured in his holy vessels. That's why he don't like what goes on in a Catholic church. 
They don't drink real wine, fermented wine at the Lord's Supper in the Bible. It's grape juice. And so he got out there and they filled it full of hooch. And boy, they filled it up. Woo! Lord in mercy. That's a hundred proof. And Belshazzar said, here, have one. Here, have one. Everybody have one. And there it went. And brother, their goozle. I was a popping up and down. I was getting drunk. And the next thing you know, there's all a staggering around there. I was on a Monday. Somebody touched me. I mean, they was all staggering around there, acting like I was in church. And and then they had. Did you know that Jerry Springer has a pervert on his show now that acts like a preacher? I seen something out where I was somewhere the other day. I about threw up. I mean, don't, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I probably want to commit suicide. Uh, uh, you seen that pervert on there? He comes out and he tries to be a preacher. You're scared to nod your head, I know. But he claims to be a preacher and he's blaspheming God and drinking and going against everything God said. And God said, that's it. You've crossed the line. And all of a sudden, fingers showed up and started writing on the wall right over against his candlestick where that light would shine on it. And it wrote, Mini, Mini, Tickle, you farsan. Mini, Mini, Tickle, you farsan. You've read that, I'm sure, in your Bible. And that means thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. And it's, in other words, it's over for you, big boy. <laughs> the jig's up. I mean, the party is over. Amen? I'm telling you tonight, God's fingers wrote doom on the wall. Now, the candlestick is a type of the Holy Spirit. The Bible talks about the candlestick in Exodus 25, and it says his shaft, his shaft, the candlestick. Let's just say tonight that this light would be the candlestick. Did you know in the tabernacle, in the tabernacle, they had the showbread, and that's a picture of the Word of God, and then it said the candlestick for you that read the Bible. Some of you are sitting there have no clue what I'm talking about because you don't read your Bible. But if you read your Bible in the Old Testament, they have the tabernacle that you enter into, and you have the table of showbread. Now, the table of showbread is the Bible, the Word of God. That's bread the priests eat every day. And they laid it on a table. But you know what? The Bible said that candlestick gave light over on the showbread. That's not an accident. God put that in there to show you. The, the candlestick's a picture of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, it said, His shaft. Calling, referring to that candlestick as a person, the Holy Spirit. Called it His shaft in Exodus 25. So that candlestick throws light on the bread, the Word of God. I'm telling you, it's the Holy Spirit that will illuminate this book right here. Not your education. You don't understand the Bible by going to school. I'm not against going to school, but school don't illuminate this Bible. The Holy Ghost illuminates this Bible. Listen, I've heard it, and you have too. I heard Brother Howard shouting, Hallelujah, Howard, the other, other morning at our camp meeting. I heard him point out things in the Scripture. I have one little story. Did y'all hear his message? And Brother Howard, I'm just using him as an example. He's an old country preacher. I ain't never been to school, I don't reckon. I don't even know if he went to high school. But he brought out stuff out of the Scripture that I'd never heard some doctors be able to bring out on an FM radio station. You know why? Because it's the Spirit of God that shines light on that Scripture. The candlestick gave light to the showbread, not natural light. It was dark inside the tabernacle. The candlestick shed the light on the, on the, on the Word of God. You know what Nebuchadnezzar, or Belshazzar saw? He saw the fingers of God right, and he wrote it on there, and the candlestick shone the light on there, and they sucked, he looked at that, and he said, I don't like the looks of that. Fingers writing on the wall. He said, I don't know what that means. Go call my astrologers. And he called this fella in and this fella in. And he called old, he called old John Edwards in and said, what does that mean? He said, I ain't got a clue. He called Chris Angel in. What does that mean? He said, I have no idea. I thought you were supposed to know stuff. Sorry, I have no clue what that means. He called this one in, that one in. You know who he got? Daniel. It takes a man of God to read the Word of God. 
It takes light from the Holy Spirit to interpret the Scripture. You'll get more understanding out of the Scripture, out of a Bible-believing, old-fashioned, King James Bible preacher, you'll get more stuff out of the Bible than you will going and studying Greek and Hebrew in any university in this country. Say amen right there. Brother, it's not by education. It's not by natural light. It's by light, illumination of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you something, you young preachers, you Sunday school teachers, you get out in the woods and pray, and you get down and you ask God to give you something out of this book, and God will illuminate that scripture. It'll put things in your mind that nobody's ever said before. I'm thanking God this evening. It's the Holy Spirit that illuminates the scripture, and God said, I'll write it on the wall to you with my fingers. So they got Daniel in there. They said, you know there's a man in your kingdom can understand this, don't you? And he said, no, are they? And he said, get him in here. His name's Daniel. And he walked in there and he heard something going. Everybody's looking around and it was a king's knees. He's sitting there going. And the knee, his knee bone just popping like that. But he, was, he had a sneaking suspicion that that thing was against him. You know the world tonight, you know the world tonight, uh, we've got some young people running around outside, some parents need to check on. And you know the world tonight that uh, all they know is, all they know is that that Bible is against them. They got a suspicion that it's against them. And I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, it takes the Word of God through the Spirit of God and a man of God to read the Word of God. You don't get the Word of God interpreted. Have you ever seen how dumb they are about the Bible on the news? Everything just drives me crazy. And they get some preacher on there and say, and so you say that everybody that disagrees with you. Them people are so educated and so ignorant on the Scripture. And Daniel looked on there and he said, uh, I know who wrote that. I'd recognize that hand right anywhere. And they said, who's that? And Daniel said, heavy, heavy, hang over your head, big boy. <laughs> you in a heap of trouble. And you know what he said? He said, God's numbered your kingdom and finished it. And the Medes and the Persians are going to take your head tonight and that thing come to pass. God's fingers wrote him a message. You hear me tonight? You've got a message in, from God laying in your lap. The Bible said, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Bible said, your Bible is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I'm going to tell you this morning, or this evening, ladies and gentlemen, you, this book will open up your eyes. This book will open up your eyes. And it takes God to do it. I'm thankful tonight. I'm so glad that one day the Holy Ghost illuminated my mind and I saw the Scripture as being the Word of God. Before I got saved, I couldn't make heads or tails out of the Bible. I tried to read it a few times. I got scared and felt guilty once in a while, and I had a little testament, and I remember in high school opening it up and trying to read it. It was, it was honestly like reading another language. And as soon as I got saved, the night after I got saved, I started reading it, and the preacher used the word manifest. And that word manifest got home, and I thought, that is the neatest word. I went around saying it after I was been saved for something manifest. I didn't even know what it meant, but it, I liked the way it sounded. I said it manifest. And the truth is, God was showing me. He was starting to illuminate my mind. And I'd sit down and listen to a man get up and read the Scripture, and it just opened, opened. How many knows what I'm talking about? That's the Holy Spirit illuminating your mind, brother. The world can't see it. When you talk to people at work, and they can't understand why you go to church all the time and read the Bible, they've never had that happen to them. It takes the Spirit of God to illuminate your mind and let you see what's in this book. Lastly tonight, I'm going to say there's a story in John chapter 8 where Jesus wrote on the ground with his fingers. What I've done here in a, just a short a few minutes is take you all the way through the Bible and show you what it says about God's fingers. All these could be a study. But in John chapter 8, the Pharisees come to Jesus one day. They're always trying to get somebody in trouble. And they come like this, and they come, and they come dragging this woman. I think... Brother Derek mentioned it in Sunday school this morning. They come dragging this woman, and they threw her down. And they said, Master, watch out for anybody that calls him Master. That's what Judas called him. He don't call him Master, you call him Lord. 
Thank God He is our Master, but He's the Lord. And brother, they couldn't master. We caught this woman in adultery. We caught her. That wicked woman ought to die. Moses said, kill her. Eh, old sickening wicked woman. And throwed her down right in front of Jesus. And all the Pharisees stood around her like that. Brother Derek brought out a good point this morning. You've heard, where was the man at? I mean, if they caught her in the act, he had to be there too. Reckon they said, Reckon it's somebody they knew. Reckon it's they're trying to cover up somebody. Reckon he said, now let me out this. You know, that's the way it usually goes. A man and a woman gets in trouble like that, or, or a boy and a girl, and the guy gets off the hook, and the girl gets uh, uh, labeled as a wicked low-down sleaze. But I'm telling you, it takes two to tango, brother. That old boy is just as wicked as she is, and most of the time, more wicked. Amen. Well, anyway, they said, Moses said we ought to... Stoner, what do you say we ought to do? And the Lord didn't say nothing. Well, we're going to kill her. She committed adultery. And the Bible said he got down like this. And they said, he ain't even talking to us. And he took his finger. It's the fifth time I've showed you God's fingers. You said, that's Jesus' fingers. Jesus' fingers is God's fingers. Amen. Same fingers that flung them stars out into in space. And the same fingers that wrote the Ten Commandments was a fixing to write something on the ground. Them fingers was in flesh now. And he took his finger and started scratching out like you, like a kid would do out in the yard in sand. And he started writing. And boy, they looked around there. And they looked and they said, uh, what's he doing? Hey, master, what are we going to do with this woman? She's caught in adultery. No doubt she was ashamed. No doubt she was crying. She probably wouldn't even look up. She probably would And, and bro, I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, uh, she, she looked down like that. There she was. Jesus wrote. And the Bible said they looked down being convicted by their own conscience and went out the greatest unto the least. One old leader of a denomination looked over and said, when he saw what Jesus wrote, he said, I'm going home. Another looked over there and he said, what's he writing? I bet he's going to say stone her, kill her, low down sleeves, cut her head off. Went, oh, my goodness. I'm only, People have debated for 2,000 years what he wrote. You want me to tell you? People have fussed and argued because the Bible don't say what he wrote. Whatever he wrote, brother, whatever he wrote, some, I've heard some people say, he started writing down, I've heard preachers say, he started writing down the names of other, those other men that had been with her. I've heard other preachers say, he started writing the Ten Commandments. Look at all the stuff you've done wrong. You ain't got no business saying that. I've heard people say, he, he I, you know, I don't know. I've heard other people say, he started listing all their sins. I don't know. I, I've heard the preachers preaching everyone, but the best one I've ever heard was Maze Jackson. And I heard old, old Maze Jackson preaching on the radio many years ago. And, you know, I, I've, I've been preaching a long time. I've read the commentaries. I heard all the doctrines. I've been to all the different camp meetings. I've been in every part of the independent Baptist. I know what they all teach and everything, brother. I've been around the circles, around the block and back. And, brother, they all say this to tell you, I never heard it put no better than what Maze Jackson said. I was listening to the truck driver special. And he said that Jesus wrote down that day. And, boy, he looked down there. Was that woman caught in adultery and there was all them old wicked men pointing their fingers at her. She ought to die. She ought to die. She ought to die. Send her to hell. Cut her head off. And boy, I tell you what, old May said Jesus wrote down and he wrote down two things. He said he wrote down justice called but mercy answered. <laughs> Hallelujah, brother. I said that's good enough for me. Mercy answered. Justice called. Justice said stoner. But mercy said no, let her go free. Hallelujah. And it'll do for me. Amen. I'll take that. And that's what the world said to me. Stone him. Kill him. Send him to hell. Justice call. But mercy answer. Amen. It's like Corey used to say when she was little. When Corey was little, she'd get you and hold your hand back here and act like she was hurting you, you know. She'd say, say the magic word. I don't know the magic word. Say the magic word. What is, I said, what is it, honey? She said, it starts with M and ends with Ursi. <laughs> I said, glory to God. 
One day the Lord found me and the devil had me all tied up. And he said the magic word starts with M and ends with mercy. Glory to God. Justice called, but mercy answered. So man's response to God's, what God's right is, when God writes something, here's man's response. Now take this and apply it to CNN, Fox News, ABC, NBC, College, the world. Apply this. Moses broke it. Belshazzar couldn't understand it. Pharaoh despised it. Jehudi cut it up. And the people in Jesus' day trampled it under their feet. That's man's response to what God writes. And all over this world tonight, you get those same responses to what God wrote. Break it. Trample it under your feet. Cut it up with a knife. Make an NIV. Make a new modern version. Stomp on it. Tear it up. Hate it. Ignore it. And can't understand it. That's man's response to what God writes with his fingers. I'm glad we got a book that God wrote with his fingers. You know what we ought to do? Pray, ask the Holy Spirit to shine light on it and open it up in our hearts.